welcome back kingdom citizens denzel rodriguez here your finance geek of the 21st century welcome back to another video on velocity banking q a where i simply read your question that you submit via the contact form on my website so to begin with uh, i want to shout out to chris ebby his question is hello denzel I've been following your Velocity Banking videos for some time now, and I believe, I believe, I grasped the concept reasonably well. I have one question, uno question. Once my debt is paid and my line of credit balance equals only my expenses for the month, should I continue to just put my monthly expense amount on the line of credit and continue to pay my expenses from the credit line continuously thank you in advance all right so this is a good question regarding the line of credit so what he's basically getting at is whether you have a credit card line of credit heloc first position well no doesn't count for this first position second position heloc personal line of credit or credit card you're doing velocity banking, you've made a chunk, and now you're approaching a point where technically you've paid off the line of credit. The only thing you have left to do is simply uh, handle your expenses from month to month until the cash flow has completely wiped out the line of credit itself. So let's put this into perspective here. Say, for example, you have a $25,000 personal line of credit. Say you make 7K a month, you spend five, you got 2K left over, all right? So whatever, whatever debt you have, not, not the issue right now. What we're really discussing is what to do when the line of credit hits 5K owed on the line of credit itself, All right? So let's say he did a 66% chunk, which is 16.5, and you make seven. So each and every month, 7K is going in, 5K is coming out. 2K cash flow is what's actually bringing that 16.5 down each and every month. The income is removing the interest costs, the 16.5 chunk is removing whatever bad debt we're tackling to obviously get the cash flow up to hence speed up the process of paying back the line of credit, all right? So real quickly, 16.5 minus 7K, right? Plus 5K, this is without me factoring in the interest, right? So I just wanna be quick, plus, shoot. Let me do that one time. 16.5 minus 7,000 plus 5,000. Boom. Minus income. This is the second month plus five. This is month two. Month three. Okay. 10.5. Month four. Income's going in. Expenses coming out. Right. This is what we're doing on a day to day basis. Income in. Expenses out, we're approaching what we call a uh, chunk capability. We're approaching that moment when his income, if he's, let's just say in this particular example, you get paid monthly. So by one, two, three, four, five, by the sixth month in this situation, the line of credit will get paid off one time. But then it has to get used again to what? Pay bills, right? So if I get paid monthly, I can only put in 6,500 for month six. If I get paid weekly or bi-weekly, different story, right? So in this particular case, let's say you get paid all, this person gets paid all at once, beginning of the month. So he dumps the 65 in and he's got Zero balance on the line of credit, but he still has 500 in the checking account. 
from month six onward, the actual interest cost is going to be like zero. We're talking cents, dollars and cents at that point. So when I reach six, seven, eight, nine months, the, the, there's, a, there's a point where we have to go ahead and make the next chunk. I often say in my videos how we don't necessarily have to hit what? Zero on the line of credit before making the next chunk. So with that being said, in Chris, to answer your question, Chris, when you read, depending on how big the line of credit is, right? So this is a nice size personal line of credit, 25K. But let's say you have a, a $5,000 line of credit, 10K or less. I would like that to hit zero um, so that we can actually chunk the whole 10 or the whole seven in that case. But when we're dealing with larger credit lines, we don't necessarily have to hit zero before making that next chunk. So my suggestion, first suggestion, if you have a large personal line of credit that is about three, four, five times your income per month, then we have permission to make the next chunk. We don't necessarily have to wait. We can go ahead and make that next chunk. So literally, when you hit zero on the line of credit, you can make the next chunk, make sure we don't really breach the 66%. We could, depending on what debt we are tackling. For example, let's say in this example right here, you had a $30,000 vehicle, right? So you did the first chunk, 30,000 minus 16,500. Boom, now you only owe 13,500 as of this month. The very first month you made the chunk, now you owe 16,500 on the line of credit, 13,500 on the car. You satisfied the month's payment that you made the chunk in. And then for the following months, two, three, four, and five, let's say the car payment is 400 a month. So that's one, two, three, four payments, right? Four payments of 400, so minus 16, right? Say three, say 400 went towards interest, so 13, five, minus 1200 right so now you're left with 123 in this month month five month six technically I'm gonna hit zero if I get paid monthly right and money's coming in all at once I'm gonna have 500 in the checking account 65 is gonna go in there what I should do is chunk in month six even though I'm going to have expenses in that month. By month six, because I don't have to wait to hit zero on the line of credit, I can get to that cash flow at a faster point. So now my cash flow will go up to 2400 right? In, that partic in this particular situation, line of credit hit zero, chunk 12.3. So now you owe 12.3 on the line of credit for month six, plus expenses need to come out. So you'll owe 12.3, go ahead and shift the remaining of that five, so minus 500. So now you'll be at 11.8 owed on the line of credit, minus 400 from 5,000, so that's 4,600. So 11,800 at expenses, 4,600, 16,400. That's perfect, perfect within that 66% range. That's perfect, right? So his total debt owed on the line of credit at the end of month six should be somewhere in the neighborhood around 16,400, right? In this particular situation. So for those who are doing velocity banking that have a large line of credit, whether that be a HELOC, or personal line of credit, and you're making your normal chunks, right? 
doing velocity banking, when you approach the point where your expenses match what's owed on the line of credit, that's an indication that you should be chunking soon. You could wait to hit to zero, that might take another month or two, but you could also chunk ahead to get closer to your cash flow number. And it would make even more sense if that second chunk, right, is gonna pay off a specific debt that's gonna increase your cash flow. Why wait for that, right? If you're tackling a big debt, a mortgage, it would still apply because you're simply keeping, you, you actually do wanna keep a balance owed on your debt tool, especially if you're tackling a bigger debt, a big amortized debt, because all you're doing is shifting that big amortized debt with all that interest and you're shifting it down over to here to a line of credit or HELOC to fairly no interest whatsoever or very, very little cost. You're offsetting your cost by simply making these chunks every six to nine months or so. So I hope that helps, Chris. That was a good question.